Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome back. I am here today to talk about Avatar, The Last Airbender, the live action Netflix series. I do specify it for the live action because Netflix does have all three seasons of the original um, Avatar, The Last Airbender that aired on Nickelodeon years and years ago. So, uh, jumping right at the, like, the elephant in the room, uh, it has been receiving a lot of critiques, a lot of negative reviews i guess you could say there's a lot of criticisms online um just on the series even before it came out about you know how things were changed for the series for netflix or how the people who actually saw the series how they thought that it wasn't anything like the old um animated series that was on nickelodeon and how it didn't capture the magic and how some of the changes that were made just weren't the same and you know we can go on and on but i do want to note that when the avatar last star bender the movie the nickelodeon uh movie that was made that one the one of the flaws that it had when it came out was that in that movie they did rush things through i mean obviously it was a movie but you didn't have that character development you know ang wasn't portrayed the same way as in the series like in the movie he was like way more you know serious and yes we're gonna go for the the fire nation and there was no hesitation and then there was these like weird you know choreography for the element um, for the bendings for the different bending styles which didn't really make sense especially when you know when they would do all this choreography for like two, three minutes, and then just for like a tiny pebble to fly out, as an example. I mean, that really was part of what made that movie so flawed and why many people didn't like that movie. It's an okay movie in and of itself, but when you compare it to the original, the source material, of course, it's not the same. Now, I mentioned this because... Obviously, there's going to be a lot of comparisons with Avatar, The Last Airbender, the Nickelodeon series that was aired years and years ago, compared to this this live action anime. This sorry, this live action series that was adapted for Netflix. And so, what is Avatar: The Last Airbender? If you've never heard of the series or if you've never seen it, um, I'll try to keep this like with as with the least amount of spoilers as I can. But if you have not seen it, and to say it in like a very, you know, general and broad sense, Avatar The Last Airbender is about this boy who is destined to be kind of like this, not savior of the world, but he's kind of like this mediator between the spirit and the physical world. And part of being able to do that is that he has mastered well, he has the ability to master all four bending styles that exist. Bending styles that not everybody has, but they are very particular for specific nations. So like the Fire Nation, well, they can bend or they can manipulate, if you will. That's kind of like another way of seeing it. They can manipulate fire. Uh, the Earth Nation, well, they can manipulate Earth. Uh, the Water Nation, the Air Nation... They can manipulate water and air, respectively. So these are like the different bending styles that exist. And rarely can anybody bend more than one element. Uh, if they can bend, it's usually just that one element. And of course, there's like sub bendings, like for example, uh, for in this one, it's not much of a sweater because it is in the series a little bit. But um, the people that can fire bend. There's a sub bending that's for lightning bending. Well, it has a different name, but basically they can generate electricity and shoot out lightning bolts. And that's kind of like the thing, right? So we have the avatar that can master all four bendings, four bending styles. And his purpose is that, you know, he'll, well, actually they, because it could be man or woman, depending. And because they can do all four bending styles, they can really put into check each of the nations and make sure that there's peace 
and that not one nation is, you know, overruling any other nation or that they're not overstepping in nature, that type of thing. When the Avatar dies, they are reborn in another nation. So it's a whole cycle. So, for example, the previous uh, Avatar was in the Fire Nation. When that Avatar, Avatar Roku, when he died, he was reborn in the Air Nation as Aang. And what it means to be reborn is that they are their own separate entities, personalities, everything. But when they go into this very powerful state called the Avatar state, they have access to the previous experiences from the previous lives that they have lived. And so that means that when they're in the Avatar state, they are in their most powerful state but they're also in their weakest and i believe they might address this in if they make like a season two but we'll see now in terms of the actual story again broad sense boy he is born into the air nation he is the avatar when it's now his duty to step up and become the avatar and be recognized as the avatar he kind of well kind of feels the pressure of the world on him and he escapes when he escapes he gets caught in this storm and the way to protect himself is that he ends up bending into this sphere of ice that preserves him for about 100 years during that time things have happened the fire nation is now a major threat to the world and to other nations and when Aang comes out of that crystal sphere that he was in, he finds out that many things have changed. And he is found, and well, he is actually liberated by uh, Katara and Sokka, who are both from the Southern Water Nation. And as he is discovering what changes have happened into a world when he was gone, he also begins his journey along with Sokka and Katara. They are with him. They go see what they can do to make things better because again for Sokka and Katara it's about well if they save the world they are saving their own nation and so of course you know they're on their journey they do whatever they can to teach Aang the different air the different bending styles because up to now he only knows air bending I'm not going to go into details into what happens throughout the whole series but how it concludes is that there are three different chapters or books. Well, according to the original series, it's separated into seasons, but they're called books. So season one is the book of water. That just concludes where they're at the Northern water nation. And what happens there is the fire nation attacks them at the, well, they attack the Northern water tribe. And the Fire Nation captain who's in charge of this siege, he even attempts to kill a water spear in order to make the War Nation weak. It kind of backfires, but in the end, that's when Aang really feels that urgency that, you know, he really needs to get going. Now, again, it's just like a general sense, but now that we've covered the bases, when we com when we do a comparison between the live action series versus you know the series that was on Nickelodeon, we do have a few differences, right? And one of the differences immediately is with Aang. They did a good time this time um, showing how Aang is still a child, right? He's not even oh I guess he's like twelve years old or ten, but he's like very young, right? And a child is still a child. They're going to be playing around. They won't take things as seriously. They, their mind might wander a bit, but Aang is still a child. He's not so like down in the dumps, you know, very serious, very depressed. It's not like that. They did a good job in the series portraying him as a child because he is a child. But a key difference in the series is that he 
pace around a lot more in the beginning, like when he's barely meeting Sokka and Katara when they find him. And there's a lot more... It takes a lot more time for them to realize that he is the avatar that was lost. And now that they found. In the series, it's almost right away that, oh, he's the airbender. Oh, he's also the avatar. I do understand the change because, of course, it's not going to be, you know, the series ha took a lot more time. And versus, well, they had to in a well amounts to almost about eight hours around eight hours that's how long the season lasts uh, on the netflix series so it, i do understand how they wanted to like speed things up in certain parts and give more time to like the different parts of the story uh, for the season so it, it makes sense it's not a change that i'm bothered with um another change is and i think it was kind of odd is how ang when he meets Katara and Katara, he, she she already is a waterbender. She already knows how to bend somewhat. And she's kind of like, okay, like she's a beginner. When Aang uh, is becoming like more familiar with Katara, she teaches him how to waterbend. And one of the frustrations in the series, in the original series, is that he is very much a prodigy. I mean, he quickly learns how to, because, you know, considering that Aang, in, as a child, he is already a master airbender. And that's why if you ever see like pictures or images of him, he has arrows. Those are the tattoos that mark that someone in the air nation is a master airbender. And he already is a master airbender at a very young age. And he is a prodigy. And so when Katara teaches him, he quickly picks up on the water bending and it's so, so similar to Airbend, which it's, that's kind of something that they didn't make a note of in the series. And, and I'll kind of touch back on this whole point, but in this, in the Netflix, Netflix series, he doesn't know how to waterbend. Katara, she barely can raise like a drop of water. And it's not until Aang goes like, oh yeah, you know, you, when I Airbend, this is what, how I feel and this is what it kind of looks like and then katara used that as a basis of oh okay then this is how i'm going to water band and it's very important and i and what and the thing that they didn't make a note of is that the reason why it makes sense for for ang to be able to give katara that type of advice is because water bending and air bending are very similar they're they're not the same but they're very similar. They're very similar. Uh, where airbending is a lot about, you know, you are avoiding and you attack. Is you're avoiding and you're finding different or alternate solutions to a problem. But ultimately you're adapting. Water bending is a lot of, you know, water adapts. And not just adapts, but it has a great force to it. So in the original series, they make a point of, well, you have a stone on a river and it will eventually corrode because, you know, water will go around it, but it will eat up at the rock. So that's why, you know, that's where the strength of water comes from it is very adaptable, but there's still force into it. And it's, and, you know, if you talk about adaptability and, you know, airbending, you're also kind of adapting yourself and being flexible. It's very similar. That's why Aang can give that advice in the live action series. But they don't really make a note of that in that. If you've never seen the series before, the original one from Nickelodeon, well, you might think, how does he do that? Now, another thing that I will say about the series, the live action series, they do focus on like key points, whereas in like the Nickelodeon, they do like a lot of filler episodes where it's, just, where it's just Aang, Katara, and Sokka. They're just like going to different tribes and helping people out. And, you know, by helping the people out, the word is getting out that, oh, you know, the Avatar has come back and he's helping people and it's giving hope. And so there's like a lot of that. However, 
the way that in this series, the Netflix series works, they are focusing on like key points in the series or in the season that are more focused on the main plot. So, you know, you go from the Southern water temple to all the way to the Northern air temple where he finds out that he is his tribe or his nation has already disappeared, has already fallen because of the fire nation. You know, and from there they go to Batsinse and, you know, they go to different parts and, you know, that's okay. That's okay. There's just this one episode, which I thought was kind of interesting that they kept in because it is a filler episode. And I think I know why they still included it, but they could have done it a different way. The episode I'm talking about is when they are, they go to this village that is being accosted by this spirit. And so this causes Aang to get into, to go into the spirit world. And it, you know, it kind of like spins out all the way to, he meets with the face dealer. It's a, this very creepy spirit that's more like a millipede. But yeah, that point aside, they could, they could have just left that out, that episode, as they already did with like the other filler episodes. However, I do see that they left it because it does it give more exposition on the avatars, the previous avatars, and what they went through, and that they're people too. Like they're they have their own flaws; they're not perfect, and each avatar has gone through different challenges and have addressed them in different ways. So it's not like it's one single spirit, one single avatar, and it's like the same person just being popping out in different parts of the world. It, they are actually their own person. And so it really does show, and, and they do it very well in that episode by showing how, you know, Avatar Kyoshi, who was from the Earth Nation, how her view is justice. You have to do what is justice. You need to do what is right. Whereas the Avatar from the Water Nation, he was very much of, well, he was aloof. He was doing his own thing, you know, he was on his own path and he worked on his own. Like his thing was you need to do whatever you need to do, right? To keep the physical world and spirit world separate. And you know, that makes it interesting. And I do believe they could have done it a different way. You know, maybe finding a journal from the past avatars or maybe finding like these manuscripts detailing the lives of the past avatars of what they knew, what they didn't know. And then, uh, then Avatar could have, I mean, not Avatar, uh, Aang could have just, you know, gone to the spirit war world and tried to contact his previous lives and see if what was on the manuscripts was real or something similar. They could have done it different. Again, I'm not going to complain that much. It was just one single episode and it really didn't affect the story that much. Now I am going to, it is, this is really, really coming in of um, running kind of long, but there was this one part of the original series in that Nickelodeon, which surprising for a kid's show, um, Aang returns to the Northern Air Temple after being, you know, after, after leaving the Southern Water Tribe along with Katara and Sokka. And he really finds out what happens to his people. To the air nations not just that he finds out what happens after he disappeared and what happens is essentially after he leaves a short term afterwards the fire nation arrives and they start invading all the air nations and when he's there when ang is there when he's back he notices how everything is burned, how everything has been incinerated, is in ashes, everything has been destroyed. But his dear friend, his mentor, his guide, his almost father figure, Monk Gyatso, he finds what happens to him. He didn't just, you know, die of an old age, which he already was at old age, right? But he finds in this room where covered in 
the floor is just littered with the corpses of soldiers from the Fire Nation. And right at the very back, right on the very top, is the corpse of Monk Gatsu. And what makes this scene very impactful in the original series is that you do you do find out, you do figure out that what happened when during the invasion, he tried saving his people, he started saving the children, he confronted the Fire Nation, and he was so powerful that he did take a lot of them with him. But in the end, he did fall to them. He did end up dying. And it is a very impactful scene. I would recommend you watch the original series if you want to look at it. And the sadness that Aang goes through is very... You know, it's hard to imagine how that must feel. Like, we have all experienced somebody close to us dying, but dying in such a horrendous way, not in a peaceful way. It's not a simple, oh, they died in their sleep. No, he, you know, Monk Getzo, who was very dear to him, did fight for the lives of others, and he really did uh, die while fighting. In the live action series, they do play it out a little bit different. They do show when it's Monk Gatso fighting against some soldiers from Fire Nation. He easily, you know, bans and defeats them. But then, uh, Sozin, who was the Fire Fire Lord at that time, he do comes up and personally fights against Monk Gatso and burns him while he's doing the tornado. When they go back and they see him, Aang just finds like a few corpses on the ground from the Fire Nation. And then he finds his dear friend, Monk Getsu, on the ground as a skeleton. And he is sad. And that scene was really well made because even if the scene itself didn't capture how horrendous that scene was, it still captures the emotion that Aang has, which is that feeling of loss, that feeling of, you know, anger, anger of what, what, what happened to his people, anger of what happened to Mont Gatso, anger at himself for not being there when they were being attacked, for feeling that he could have done something. But, you know, then that's kind of how it goes and that's also another thing about the series where Aang it, during the live action series he is going through this phase of he's he, he looks at his past at what he did of running away as that is what triggered the war that's why the Fire Nation did he feels a sense of guilt he feels a sense of guilt, but he also feels powerless. He feels like he can't do anything because he can just airbend. Because again, in the live action series, he does not learn waterbending at all. Whereas in the original Nickelodeon, he does. He does learn from Katara how to waterbend. And he's kind of decent. They're almost at the same level. But again, it's that feeling of, you know, he's lost people of responsibility that he's the one that caught that allowed the fire nation to do what they did and that he needs to do something to make it right but he can't because he is powerless and that's why there is such a rush at one point of the plot there is a rush for him to try to go into avatar, avatar state and understand why it is in order to kind of use it as a weapon Now, I know I've talked a lot about like different things about the series and doing all comparisons, but I will say that this live action was well done. I'm not going to say that it was bad. Even with the differences that are made, it still makes for a very compelling series. You know, I, I could also go about like, oh, in the original series, uh, I forget her name, but... 
you know, she is Prince Zuko's sister, Asura. Asura, that's her name. Asura already can generate lightning and she's very calm and collected and schemes a lot. And she takes a lot of satisfaction for making from making other people suffer. That's kind of like her thing. She's very cold. She's very demeaning. And in the live action, they make her a lot more humane. Like, she's more of a psychopath. But, you know, she's still, you can still see, like, the range of emotions. And, you know, she gets angry. She gets frustrated. She will kind of jowl out. And then she'll take it out on the prisoners of war that supposedly her father is making her fight. So it's different. But it's not something that compromises the story. It's just a matter of how they are, are going to address like a couple of things. If they ever do like a season two. So address, for example, you know, in season two or like in the original series, they call it book earth, book two earth. Uh, Ang is going to be looking for or Ang looks for an earth bending master. Because he needs to learn earthbending, which is kind of like a challenge for him. Because it's so opposite to how you airbend. However, you do also need to address, you know, what is lightning bending? Why did Azula, why is Azula able to generate lightning? And so they have to also address what is sub bending? You know, what are like the subtypes of bending that there are? Um, that would probably also include, and this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but um, for water bending, there's like a sub bending where they can bend blood, but only one person can do that. Um, so it's kind of like those little details that will have to be addressed eventually, as well as the Avatar state, where they will have to explain how the Avatar state is. You can't, he, I think, can't rely so much on it. Because it is also like the weakest part. I mean, he's at his strongest, but he's also at his most vulnerable state when he's in the avatar state. And they do have to kind of address like these little things. But I think that overall, this series was well done. They did take their time. Hopefully, you know, there's going to be a season two. Hopefully, there's a season three. Hopefully, they might even do like a. No, probably not. I was going to say maybe like a in between seasons with like the filler episodes, but you know, that might be the that's probably asking too much because it is going to take a lot of budget in order to do that. And as it stands, all the people will still criticize it. I don't know. It's one of those things where it might be popular to hate on the live action series. Personally, I think it was good. I would watch it again and probably will at some point. So. I don't know. I don't know. I, I will pass the question to to anybody who might be watching this or hearing this. Have you watched the live action series? Did you watch the original ones? What was what was your opinion on it? I don't know. Just leave a comment and let's start a discussion. All right. Well, anyway, I'll leave it here for now. I'll leave it here for today. Uh, you know, maybe I'll have more thoughts on it. Maybe there's might be a second part to this maybe what there there won't but at any rate have fun take care and just remember be kind to those around you because you never know what they're going through take care everyone